Welcome to an exciting tutorial on Adobe Edge Animate. Now, for those of you who have used Edge before, Edge has changed its name to be more descriptive. So we have Adobe Edge Animate Preview 7. It used to be called Adobe Edge. I think a lot of people got confused as to what it is, because what it was, because unless you said the word Adobe, if you just hit Edge training, people are like, what's that? So let's get started. So today's course, this is a sample course of my online full in-depth course on Udemy.com. At the end of this video, I will share with you how you can upload and I'm sorry, how you can watch the full course and get a 50% off coupon. So let's get started. Here's my objective. I want to make a new file, file new. I'm on Mac, Windows, Epic, Control, N. Now, what we're going to do here is simply save the file. Now, for those of you that are new to Edge, what Edge does is write HTML files. It's going to basically create a proprietary file and an Edge file. I'm simply going to call this file index version 1. Save. Now, the second thing you probably want to do in Edge is to title your document. The same titling that you would have inside a Dreamweaver, this is the title of the browser window. So I'm just going to call this My Slideshow. Make a change, save a change. Now, this is my own personal preference here. What I suggest to you from here is change this to a something that makes sense to you. Otherwise, it's going to put this code inside the page. You're not going to know what it's for if you don't know what you're doing. So what I suggest you do here is change the code. What we'll is call this slide show one. Make a change, save a change. Good app to get into. Now, next thing we're going to do is change the size of the stage. I'm going to change the size of the stage to 500 by 350. Right? Now, here's the objective. I want to make an edit slideshow that has a timer set to it. So we can do two different types of slideshows. We're going to do the slideshow without a timer. Then we're going to do the slideshow with a timer. And I'm going to show you how simple it is if you understand my simple, simple techniques using my proven methods. So let's get started. So from the file menu, file import. I'm going to grab. Now, this is an important step here. All right. I'm going to go grab the JPEG files. Now, important to understand that by default, a div tag, is that what that's what Edge is going to make? Edge is going to make a series of ID tags. ID tags cannot start with a number. They can't. So when I import these graphics, it's going to put an underscore next to it. That's okay, but I just want to share with you, if you bring in an object with a number, an ID tag can't have a number associated to it when it starts the sequence. So we're simply going to, okay. Then it's going to say you have to give this an underscore. So we'll do that. Okay, 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 okay. Make a change, save a change. So here are the objects here, 64, 63, 58, 55, et cetera, et cetera. Now, our objective is to simply get these pictures to move across the stage one at a time. Now, what I want to share with you is how the program thinks. This is a timeline-based program. If you work in Final Cut or After Effects or Flash, it's the same type of timeline, but this timeline works differently. Okay, so here's the objective. Here's the assets over here. So here's the assets here. Here's the layers. Here's the stage settings. If I select the graphic, I have the graphic settings. Stage settings, graphic settings. One of the things I want to do with the stage settings is hide the overflow, which means anything off the stage I don't want to see. So I'm going to go here and say hidden. Make a change. Save a change. Now, when I move these animation graphics, these photos across the stage here, I want to start with the bottom one first. If I start with the top one first, it's going to cover everything up. So here's a simple, simple technique of how to create a slideshow. It's really, really this simple. I select the graphic, select the picture. Hit the P for pin, simply letter P for pin. Now, for those of you that have worked in Flash or After Effects before, again, this is very, very different. What we're going to do is pin the future. We're going to pin the future. We're going to say we want to see this photo, not now. We 
want to see this half a second later. So we're going to click right here and change that to 0 0.5 turn key. So therefore, it's going to create a keyframe for us when I move this. So we simply could take this and drag this. If I drag it, it's going to create keyframes. Notice down here it created keyframes. Okay. What I want to do is simply move it off the stage. So the width of this is 629 pixels. So we're going to move this roughly greater than 629 pixels. In fact, if you want to be totally lazy, I can copy that and say minus paste. Therefore, it moves off the stage. So basically, go to the keyframe here and the keyframe here. Now, in addition to this, we want this to bounce in. So I select the object, select the layer, click right here, and ease out. Based on these choices, we're going to ease out elastic. And I click back here. Now, the next is total, total child's play. I want to apply the same effect to the other one, two, three, four photos. Now, in order to make this happen, we have to select this and copy this. Edit, copy, Command C, Macintosh, Control C, Windows. Then turn the pin off, P for pin. Then move the playback head here. Very important step. Make sure the playback head is here. Then I select the picture and I paste, select, paste, select, paste, select, paste, make a change, save a change. Now, if I simply hit the return key, space bar, it's going to, sorry, my mistake on the return key. If I simply hit the space bar, it's going to play the first slide, second slide, third slide, etc., etc. Now, if this is going too fast for you without creating code, we could select all, command A selects all, and we can take this and make this longer or we could take this and make this shorter. So in this particular case, I'm going to leave it exactly where it is. Because here's my objective. First of all, I want to see what this looks like on a website. So I can do that very simply by hitting Command and Key Return, Macintosh, Control Return for Windows. Command and Key Return. And there is my files. If I hit Command R to refresh that, So very simply, I created a slideshow. Now here's the problem with the slideshow. Obviously it's going way too fast. So let's go back to Edge for a second. Now I want to share with you that we could take this and drag this out. I could take the whole thing. Let's say I want each slide to be here for seven seconds. Well, I can take this and drag this out, which means if I have five slides, I would have to go five times 7, 35, I'd have to make this 35 seconds long. Well, that can get very tedious, especially if you have 50, 60, 70 photos. So here's a simpler way, okay? So we're going to take this file, and I'm just going to file save it as, and I'm going to call this index version 1B. Now, this is a very good habit to get into when working with any type of file, specifically Edge, because if you want to have different versions, or especially if you're experimenting with it, it makes total sense to basically give it a different name. We're also going to call this slideshow 1B. Make a change, save a change. Now, here's what you want to do. Okay, so I want to tell the playback head to basically do something when it gets there. Now, this is very similar to Flash and Action Script, but with Edge uses JavaScript. JavaScript syntax is similar to ActionScript. I'm going to make this very, very simple. So we're going to move our playback head to this keyframe. Now, if you hold down the Shift key, you can snap right to that keyframe as well. So I'm going to hold down the Shift key and snap to that keyframe. Then I'm going to click right here for trigger. The shortcut for that is Command T, Control T for Windows. Now, the objective is to control the playback head. So what I want to do, if I click right here, I could, based on these choices, simply say stop. And that's going to stop the playback head. Now, if I hit Command Return for a second, it's going to stop that playback head. Well, that's totally fine and dandy if I want to make this interactive. 
I can set code here to click the photo and go to the next photo. Okay, and that technique I share with you in my full in-depth A through Z training on Udemy.com. Again, there is a coupon for this. If you click the front of my channel on the right-hand side, you'll see a 50% off coupon for my full in-depth course on this software. Now, here's the objective. Okay, I'm going to double-click back there again. Now, I already have a stop action. I'm going to delete that. And I'm simply going to paste because I already have code put in here. This is very, very simple code. Now, I will include the code for you that you can simply copy and paste in the description of this video at the bottom of this video. So you simply go to your trigger, Command T, Control T, Windows at the appropriate time. And I'm going to put this code. Now, the only thing I have to be concerned about is this number right here. Right now, that represents 55 milliseconds. There's 1,000 milliseconds in a second. So if you want this to pause for five and a half seconds, that's what you would do. Now, for demonstration purposes, we're just going to pause this three seconds. I'm going to type in there, 3,000 milliseconds. And I'm going to save that. Now, the second you save that, the window hides. Now, important step here, I can take this trigger, copy it, Command C, Control C, move my playback head, and paste. Move my playback head and paste. Move my playback head and paste. Therefore, it took that same exact code that we just did and pasted it to those different keyframes. So what's happening right now, it's going here, it's playing, it's stopping for three seconds, and then it's playing. It's stopping for three, three seconds, and then it's playing. It's stopping for three seconds and playing. It's stopping for three seconds, and it's looping back to here. So let's test that. Command key return. So there's the first photo, 1,000, 1, 2, 3, 1,000, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 1, 1, 1, So that's a very simple way. Now, you can use this technique for a variety of different things. You can do this for a slideshow, as I'm demonstrating, a banner ad on a website. You can basically delay these any way you choose. Okay, so let's think about this. Let's say that I don't want this to be A at the same time. Now, a little shortcut here, if I hit Command E, Control E, Macintosh, here's my full code. There's my first trigger, my second trigger, my third trigger, my fourth trigger. In this particular case, they're all the same. You can also click right here and go to full code. So let's say that this is a slideshow, and I'm sorry, a better ad for advertisement that I'm going to put on my website. And let's say this slideshow has more text than this, or perhaps this one I want to have for 5,500 milliseconds. This will leave at 3,000. Maybe this one has much more text to read. So we'll put this at 6,500, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this first one will change to two seconds. Make a change, save a change. Command E brings it up. Command E hides. Now, fortunately, it looks like that my edge just crashed because unfortunately, I've noticed that edge is slightly buggy. It did crash. However, I opened it back up. So let's play this. So let's close this window. Command returns. So now they're going to stagger differently. This one comes in. Actually, what just happened there? So it recovered from the crash here. And now it's basically working correctly. So it's really, really this simple to do this. Now, what I want to share with you, that this is a brand new channel here, and this is my very first video for this particular channel. So if you go to my channel here and subscribe, hopefully you'll subscribe and support what I do. If you click right here, you can get 50% off on Adobe Edge training.
So, if you go to the front of my channel and you click right here, this is going to take you to the Adobe Edge course, which retails for $99. You guys can get 60% off and get it for $39. Read my reviews. Also, check out my other videos. So, if you basically go to this website, udemy.com forward slash u forward slash think earn earn you can see all, all my available courses here on udemy.com now if you go to my main youtube site which is simply thinkdreamweaver.com think Jeez, can't type today. Sorry, guys. Sorry, Think Dreamweaver. ThinkDreamweaver.com is my website. Okay, so basically, I have different courses here for different percentages off as well. So enjoy this video. I'm here to help you every step of the way. Any questions, submit your questions on YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm here to help you. My name is Robert Carpe Diem. Of course, my name's not Robert Carpadium. So if you have contacted me and said, hello, Carp, well, Carpadium simply means have a nice day in Latin. So enjoy the day. Talk to you soon.